How to naturally dye patterns. Hello and welcome back to my channel Billy New. Today I'm going to show you how to create patterns or paint using soy milk. This is a really easy, fun way to make patterns on your fibre with natural dyes. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Billy New. It's been a really, really long time since we last made a video, so I'm excited to be doing it today, although it feels a bit strange. So the reason we haven't done anything for the past uh, few months is because I'm pregnant and I was just really, really sick, vomiting all day, every day for, for three months. So I've been out of action, but I'm ready to get back on it now. So before I get started, I just wanted to mention that um, I have an Instagram, which is Billy New Apparel. Uh, I have a website where you can, can check out my products that I sell that some are naturally dyed, some aren't, and that's billynew.com. Also, we have a few eBooks available. So if you like our videos and you want to support our work, it's really great if you can head over there and check out our eBooks. Also, it's quite nice to like have something written down to kind of go along with the video so you can kind of like reference between the two. So like I said at the beginning, today I'm going to be taking you through how to make patterns or paint um, with soy milk. I've got a few things that um, I'm going to dye today. Some of them have been prepared beforehand because soy milk actually works best if you give it a little bit of time to um, cure. So there's a few things that have been resting for a couple of weeks. But I'm going to show you what I did with them on this piece of denim. So this piece of denim has already been mordanted with alum acetate. So the next step will be to paint it with soy milk, which I will show you in a minute. And these are a couple of baby grows that I have prepared with soy milk already. So I'm going to dye these today and you'll be able to see the results of um, the, the results you can achieve with the soy milk. So these baby grows haven't been mordanted. They've just been pre-treated with soy milk. So the soy milk acts as a binder. Um, and then afterwards I've painted some patterns onto the onto the fabric. You, I'm not sure if you can really see that, but you will hopefully be able to see it in the pot. Um, also just a little tip, if you're painting with soy milk or any kind of natural paint or paint or whatever, um, I quite like to put cardboard especially if I've got two layers of fabric, I quite like to put cardboard in between the two layers or I'm going to be working on the floor with this. Um, I would ideally like to have a piece of cardboard or, or something protective underneath it, a little bit absorbent. So I am going to make some soy milk. As I said before, we already have a video on how to make soy milk, but for this, I'm just going to tell you my kind of rough, um, quantities for making a nice thick um, um, soy milk kind of paste. So this was actually like one really big handful of soybeans and I've just soaked them um, in a big cup of water and that should be fine. I'll rinse those and um, wash them and then I'll use probably two cups of water. So two cups of water to one cup of soybeans for this recipe. I'll also be using a little bit of thickener um, gum, gum arabic is a good good thickener which I'll be using and that will help with the the consistency of the of the soy milk. So just to go over that my um, recipe or my kind of quantities for making the soy milk for painting are one big handful of soy, soybeans which have been soaked these have been soaked for about 48 hours but you could 24 hours is fine um, some gum about Arabic, um, it's the thickener to thicken the paint, just a small teaspoon um, and water, two cups of water. I've got my nice blended up soy milk and 
goes quite thick when you blend it like that and fluffy like bubbles and stuff which is cool so the idea is that the colors of the natural dyes stick to the proteins in the in the soy milk which is quite high in protein I think so I mean you can use store-bought milk it's just not as kind of rich and creamy if you know what I mean you can also do a smaller smaller batch of milk depending on what you're painting I made quite this is quite a lot actually um, because I'm painting denim and denim is quite absorbent so you want to be aware of what kind of fabric you're painting and I could also do another extraction of that but I'm not going to I'm just going to keep it like this because it's a, it looks like a good quantity to me so I've just boiled my kettle and I've got my um, thickener here I'm just going to add a tiny 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 bit this does get quite thick so you don't act, I might have even put too much in there I'm going to mix it up I could probably use a better utensil than that as well but anyway get the idea mash it around can you see it's going like gel I don't want to use too much hot water because I don't want my soy milk to get too hot because I don't know soy milk goes smelly quite quickly probably definitely have a better utensil for that so what I'm going to do is put it in my soy milk and then I'm going to blend it again to get rid of some of those lumps so hopefully I'll have blended up all the lumps in my thickener and I'll have a nice smooth milk to paint with next step lay down your cardboard or something absorbent um, or even I suppose even something plastic would do um, if you have it if not don't worry I'm gonna paint onto this side of my fabric So my fabric is dry, already mordanted with alum acetate. This is a cellulose fiber. Here's my creamy, thick milk. You could make it thicker with more um, thickener if you wanted like to do something, I mean, even more detailed or if you've got a smaller piece of fabric or something. I like to make quite a lot when I'm working with denim, as I said before, because it's absorbent and you'll see like the milk kind of dis like yeah disappears into the fabric and I'm not going to try and be too adventurous because drawing and art aren't my strong point so I'll just go with some nice like um checks I suppose and you want to make sure that the soy milk really does get into all the the grain of the fabric I might just do stripes on this one. I should have done them the other way. Anyway. You can see it going right in there. And you can see there as well why it's a good idea. If you're wanting something precise, why it's a good idea, or or just not to be messy, to have some something underneath it. It's also a cool way of working if you haven't um, mordanted your fibre. So you literally just paint straight on and it works with anything like any plant fiber, any animal fiber. You could also try using oat milk I've heard works as well, maybe not as well as soy milk, but and even cow's milk. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm being a bit messy here. 
which is my style but really you don't even have to put thickener in the soy milk especially if you're making it from scratch at home you just make sure that you've got a good layer like I might go over these lines again make sure it's really 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 soaked in we'll see So this piece of denim, I prepared with soy milk in the same way that I have just showed you on that other piece of fabric um, about two or three weeks ago. So it's had a little bit of time to cure um, and it's been soaking in water for a good couple of hours because um, even then, now it's still not quite fully wet, but it should be okay. I'm going to squeeze it out nice and thoroughly. Um, because you want your fibres to be wet before they go into the dye bath or uh, wetted out. Um, and these are just these little baby grows which get wet pretty quickly so I've just given them a quick dunk as well. And these are now destined for the dye pot. I've got two colours today. I've got onion skins which I ha also have another video on, on how to um, how to dye with onion skins which you can check out if you want some tips on that and an ebook as well so for more tips but I'm not going to go into that right now so I'm going to give these a squeeze this is number one baby grow can't remember what I did on this I think I did some kind of rainbow and I think I'm going to put that in onion skins should go a good colour pretty quickly but we'll see if the paint has worked right. and here we've got logwood which goes I hope it I hope they work we'll see That is. You hold that one and I'll get the next one. So look, we've got from the same dye pot, we've got two different results. Aren't they cool? So this. Pink yeah. And purple. So this one is an unmordanted baby grow with splashes of soy milk on it and this one is a baby grow that's been 
treated with soy milk beforehand and then extra soy milk on top. This one was put first in the dye bath. So this one's a little bit more subtle. So yeah, you can see how much difference the soy milk makes. See? In fact, I'm not sure which one I prefer. I prefer this one. Do you? Well, I'm going to see what until they, when they dry. Okay. Look at these colours together with the indigo. Don't they look awesome? Yep. <gasps> Whoa, it's like a, a rainbow with... Now let's see what's happened in the onion skins. <laughs> wow. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah. It's actually still a little bit hot this dye bath, so I should be being careful. Yeah, I'm using this too. So I need to get all the liquid out. Oops. Oh, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Stop it. So, this one. Oh, look, there's a little pattern. What is the pattern? Can you see what the pattern is? A rainbow pattern. Yay. So, this one was treated with soy milk and then point painted on top with soy milk. So, the contrast is quite subtle. But. I still love it. It's going to be a stylish little baby, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to take this upstairs and unspin it to get the excess liquid out. <laughs> it's worked really, really nicely. <laughs> If you can see there it's worked amazing hasn't it so this is my painting with soy milk um, I'm really really happy with how it came out so remember I mordanted my fiber with alum acetate first and then painted soy over the top if you wanted more of a contrast you could just paint with soy and then you'd probably have a kind of lighter or clearer just but that's exactly what I wanted for my cushion. I'm going to dry it and then tomorrow I'll heat set it with the others and give them a final wash and show you the results. Um, I just wanted to show you the washed and dried results of my painting with soy milk yesterday. I've got three baby grows and something that's going to be a cushion cover and they've all worked really really well so this I don't know if you can see that was a baby grow treated with soy milk and then soy milk painted on top I really like the way this one's come out I wasn't sure it was going to be so good but actually I think it's my favorite now um, this was logwood with soy milk and I really really love this kind of purpley grey colour. I'm not sure what happened there. I think maybe where I've hung up my, where I hung up to dry, I think the piece of string might have discoloured it or anyway, but it doesn't matter. This one also was soy milk with no, no mordant, nothing on the baby grow, just some soy milk splashed on. So you can tell I'm not really much of an artist, just <laughs> seeing what I go with the flow. I don't know if you remember yesterday that these two were both um, quite pink and purple. This one especially was very pink and they've dried much, well, greyer I guess. So that's quite interesting to note. The final colours aren't always like they are in the pot. So these two I wanted to show you. I added this one um, a bit late in the, in the pot yesterday. It was just an unmordanted piece of um, denim with soy milk painted on the top um, but it went into the same pot as this and as you can see the, the contrast is quite big between the colours but it's nowhere near as orange um, and that'll be because I mordanted this piece of fabric with um, alum acetate and just want to show you that this is my absolute favourite. I'm so happy with how it turned out. 
I'm so, so happy with how this turned out. It's exactly what I wanted. Bright orange, nice contrast. Um, and it just looks really cool, I think. That's gonna be a cushion cover. The thing I also love about natural dyes is the way their colors always go really good together. As usual, you can tweak this method to suit your needs, your style or your product. You can easily modify the quantities to make a thicker paint or paste, or for using a more precise artwork. There are a few thickeners out there like guar gum, um, gum arabic, and I've even used algae in the past, so any of these will do. Thanks for watching and I hope you found some useful tips to help you in your natural dye journey. In our next video, we're going to be exploring eco-printing, so keep an eye out for that one.